Well, hello. How are you doing? I'm Landon. This is Landon 27 Music. And maybe you've been to my channel before, maybe not. If you're new here, thanks for checking me out. I've got something a little bit different today. Uh, normally, I focus on guitar related stuff and music, microphones, anything kind of guitar and music related, basically. Once in a while, I like to look at some technology stuff when it relates to the stuff that I do on my channel. So, I guess in the way that my guitars and my amps and my pedals are tools that I use to make music, I like to consider the, the Mac Mini that I have and Final Cut Pro as a tool for making the videos for this channel. So when I get something that's related to that, I like to share it. Even though it's not necessarily music related, it's still pretty cool. So today I've got something here. This is called an EGPU. And in particular, this is from Sonnet. It's an EGFX Breakaway Puck Radeon RX 570. So why do I have this? Well, uh, if you've watched my channel, you might have seen the video, possibly. Last fall, I got the 2018 Mac Mini, the i5 edition with the eight gigs of RAM. And overall, it's been really good. I did some performance demos. I used that along with Final Cut Pro to make videos for this channel. And so all the specs on it are pretty good, except it's lacking in one area, and that's the graphics. The onboard graphics, it's, uh, it's got an Intel UHD graphics 630, which can do an okay job, it's just, it could be a lot better, I think. So, I was looking around online and I stumbled on this company called Sonnet and I reached out to them and asked them uh, if I could test out one of these, these puck units. So basically you've got a GPU that's standalone from a laptop or in my case a Mac Mini and it's very portable. So what we're going to do is plug this in to my Mac Mini. It's using a Thunderbolt connection. We're going to do some benchmarking and comparisons and we're going to compare the built-in graphics on the uh, 2018 Mac Mini against the Radeon RX 570. So my primary focus in this video will be to demonstrate Final Cut Pro X. We're going to do some exporting of 1080p projects and 4K projects. And then I'll also do a couple um, simulated benchmarks, which means it's not real world applications. It's stuff like Geekbench 4 and Heaven uh, it's a 3D simulator. So we're going to run both of those and see how they compare with the built-in versus the GPU. And I'm expecting good things because I don't think the built-in GPU on the Mac Mini is that great. I think it's been proven, but let's see how much better this actually is. All right, for our first sample here, I've got a basic 1080p project in Final Cut Pro X. What we're gonna do is, well you can see here, it's uh, very basic, it's just single shots and transitions. Uh, I'm gonna export it into uh, an H.264 without the GPU and then with the GPU. So we'll speed it up so the process goes quickly and then we'll compare the times, how much time it took to export each one. Okay, so the built-in graphics card took four minutes roughly and the external GPU took three minutes. So trimmed about a minute off and uh, it's not major, but I guess, you know, it's, it's something for sure. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, the next section here, we are exporting 1080p again. The projects are a little bit more advanced. Um, we've got multiple video layers. You can see there are multiple um, audio layers, there's color correction, various effects, so a lot more going on than in the original um, exporting that we did. This one is also a 10 minute project, the original was a 10 minute project as well. Actually all the exporting will be 10 minute projects, so that's something to keep in mind just for reference. So let's go ahead and check out how the two compare. All 
right, once again, the internal took four minutes and the external GPU managed to double the performance and only take half the time. So let's now move on to the next test with 4K. All right, let's move into a basic project with 4K resolution. Same idea here, it's um, just a single line of video and some basic transition, so let's see how it goes. All right, so here's the results. The onboard graphics did 13 minutes, and the Radeon RX 570 eGPU did seven minutes. So that's quite an improvement. So let's move on to the next, uh, more advanced 4K project and see how it does. All right, there we go. 16 minutes for the built-in graphics and half the time with the Radeon RX 570. So that's pretty impressive to me. I typically work in 4K with a lot of um, a lot of effects and layers and stuff like that. So that's definitely some pretty cool results to see. All right, let's move on to some Geekbench scores now. Alright, now let's run some tests with Geekbench 4. We've got two tests, OpenCL and Metal. So right now we're running the OpenCL with the built-in Intel GPU. And we're going to get some results here. We've got a score of 27,894. And so that again is with the built-in. We're going to now select the same, same test, OpenCL, but with the RX 570 run through that I'm just speeding up a little bit the actual test takes about 40 seconds so we've got the score 109,726 which is a huge improvement over the 29,000 sorry 27,000 and just scrolling through the different results you can see them quickly here and then we're going to move on to the metal test all right running the metal test with the built-in intel gpu Again, skipping through it quickly here. It's got a score of 21,244. And then we're going to compare that. And here's the summary of all the different tests. Uh, now we're going to run it against the Radeon RX 570. Skip through that. And then compare them side by side. It's got a score of 113,144. Huge improvement over the built-in card. So there you go once again. Both tests, the OpenCL and the Metal, uh, we've got a massive improvement with the RX 570. All right, so that is it for the Geekbench 4. Now let's move on to our final benchmarking of the video. All right, now we're moving into some benchmarking with the Heaven benchmark software. This is just the free edition, and so we're running the, uh, the basic and you can see it's already struggling here with the graphics 630 from Intel. We're looking at not even 17 frames per second. And that's pretty pretty sad, I think. I don't know. You wouldn't be able to run something or play a game. If this was an actual game, you wouldn't be able to play this very well. Uh, I'll do like 20 seconds here and then we'll move into the next part. So yeah, this uh, will run through like 26 different benchmarks. Now we're going to move on to the extreme. Same graphics 630. I don't imagine this is going to do very well, considering uh, under 20 frames per second is pretty sad in the other one. So let's see how we do when it starts up here. And we're so choppy, it's hard to read the actual frames per second. Yeah, 4, 4.5, not usable. Definitely not. Uh, you can't use this in a game, for sure. Clearly, 
not gonna happen. So that's the built-in Intel UHD Graphics 630. Pretty much what I was expecting. So let's move on. All right, now running the same test again, the basic. This time with the Radeon 570. And I'm expecting to see quite an improvement. And yeah, already looking at close to 65, 66. Looking at almost 70 frames per second there. Pretty smooth. Um, graphics don't look that great. Obviously, this is just the basic and it doesn't have much detail on, but huge improvement over the, uh, the built-in card. So go for about 20 seconds here. Now let's move over to the extreme. Same thing using the uh, Radeon RX 570 and see how this makes up. I'm not really sure what to expect here. Once this thing gets loaded, it takes a little while. Okay, we're looking under 30 frames per second. It looks good. It's uh, running okay. I mean, you know, it's got everything maxed out. So, definitely an improvement. What can I say? You saw, I think, four frames per second with the original card, and now you're looking at uh, close to 30. And there we go. That's it for the, the Heaven benchmarking. Uh, I just want to thank Sonnet for sending this out for me to borrow and check out. Really appreciate that, especially that I'm not particularly a tech channel. So they've taken uh, the chance to send this out and have me take a, a look at it and do my own kind of Lano 27 review. And you've seen what you get with it um, in the little intro there. It comes with a Thunderbolt cable. It comes with... Uh, an external power supply. Yeah, basically everything you need to get started. So, all right, that's gonna do it. You got to see all the comparisons now. You got to see the uh, the exporting in Final Cut Pro. You got to see some Geekbench scores and you got to see the Heaven 3D um, software as well and how it compares. So, maybe you have a 2018 Mac Mini and you were looking to get a, a GPU that won't break the bank. This one goes for, last time I checked, 499 US. Uh, if you wanna actually go get one, I'll put a couple links in the description. I got a couple links below. One is to my Amazon affiliate link, which links to the storefront for Sonnet, so you can buy it directly from them through Amazon, or you can actually buy it right off their site, sonnettech.com. So check them out. I was impressed. Were you impressed? Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. If you have any questions, if there's anything you wanted to see that wasn't in this video, but let me know if you wanted to see any testing done with this um, and different applications that I didn't do in this video, let me know. I could possibly get back to you if I have time to do that. Okay, so that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for checking it out. All right, I'm Landon. It's Lando 27 Music. As always, play guitar and have fun. In this case, I'm playing eGPUs and eGFXs, which is kind of like playing... No, it's totally different. I don't know what I'm saying. No, I'm rambling on. Not making any sense. Go check out my um, 2018 Mac Mini videos. Put them in the in the cards and links below. That's it. All right. Take care. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Wow.